Conan here, and uh, I'm just going to say this is a special segment. Yes. It is, because we are joined by my wife, <laughs> Liza Powell O'Brien, and everyone far prefers Liza to me. <laughs> yep. That is pretty much true, oh, right? Oh, so true. So everyone true. says to me when they meet Liza, she's fantastic. Yeah. And the emphasis is on that she is the one who is fantastic. Yes. And I'm tired of it. So we're going <laughs> to... I'm gonna cut, you, I'm what gonna are you going to do? Oh, I'm going to cut this one down to size. <laughs> you brought her on the podcast to do this. Yeah. <laughs> How are you, betrothed? <laughs> I feel like if I was around everyone as much as you're around them, they would the balance would shift back. No. Nope. Okay. <laughs> Absolutely okay. not. No, right, I don't then. think I don't can think I can say kids. that with confidence. I don't know you, but I know him. But I know Liza a bit. But don't I you? chose him. So yeah. what does that tell you? <laughs> That's true. That's true of all the men in the world, you chose this one. If they were all at my disposal. <laughs> they were all at your disposal. <laughs> Every one of them. Matt Damon, them. they were all lined up. <laughs> Matt Damon. Damon? I don't know. It's just... <laughs> and I'm thinking of him, of course, from Team America. I'm Matt Damon. <laughs> anyway, let's pull this thing together because Liza likes to spend as little time with me as possible. And so the fact that she's here means there's a reason. And uh, I am very proud of the fact there are many things you do that I'm very proud of, uh, but uh, your tolerance for me is a great source of pride. But um, you have made this podcast that uh, I think is stunningly good. I love it. And I'm not just saying that. Many people really like this podcast. It's called Significant Others. And we thought this was a good time to talk about it because it's Valentine's Day. You know, you're so in love with me. Uh, <laughs> I do appreciate being recognized for that. It's your greatest achievement is your love for me. It confuses everyone. No, and your podcast, uh, though I wouldn't describe it as a romantic podcast, no. but it is about couples, uh, couples dynamics, significant others, how they, sometimes it's a husband and wife. Mm -hmm. uh, these are famous couples. Sometimes it's, uh, it could be a father, daughter. There's a power dynamic and how that all works. Sometimes positively, sometimes negatively, often positively and negatively. Is that a fair description? Yeah, it is. I think you're right that it's not, romance is not at all part of, I mean, sometimes there are romantic stories, but mostly they're stories of, um, Sort of complicated partnerships. Yep. Um, yep. Which spoke to me, I don't know why. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's so funny because you, I often contrast your podcast with mine. Uh, ours is, is, is seat of the pants, um, absolute nonsense. Uh -huh. Liza works, uh, I'm always seeing her pretty much uh, in her study, in her small study. Uh, that is often also occupied by several cats that hate me, by the way. But you were always in there reading like 60 books, studying, crafting these episodes. You get very cool people to do the voices. You also use a bunch of the people here at Team Coco. I do. And you really make these things beautifully. And uh, then I'm also a little put off that you have a fantastic podcast voice that is far superior to mine. Yeah. I don't know why I, I'm the one with, <laughs> who's doing the podcast first, because your voice is so terrific. Well, that's and nice. I, Thank yeah. you. You know, you've influenced me because season one, I love season two is premiering. I haven't heard a bunch of these yet. And I know that you've been working on them. But I, uh, for example, Jenny and Karl Marx, mm -hmm. Karl Marx's wife, and what their relationship was like. Mm -hmm. And because you were doing all this research, when you were done with one of the books, I read it. I had never read a book about Karl Marx uh, and his relationship with his wife, Jenny. But that's a husband and wife team uh, where you can really see how as a couple, they worked with each other. Then there are other teams like Billy Strayhorn and Duke Ellington. Mm -hmm. Tell us about that. Billy Strayhorn, Duke Ellington was, um, I think has been referred to as the first great American composer. Mm -hmm. He was just unbelievably talented mm -hmm. and, uh, you know, forget the fact that he was, um, you know, violently discriminated against his entire life. But even outside of that, his accomplishments are spectacular. So he kind of had this empire almost of of music and he had all of these different he had different versions of his band and he was touring all the time and kind of stretching himself really thin and he he met this kid named Billy Strayhorn who was 21 
who had wanted to, I don't want to give the whole story away, mm -hmm. um, but he had wanted to be a concert pianist and he was a prodigy. He was incredibly gifted, used to play the piano in the, um, he, the, he and his family lived in a boarding house and uh, the prostitutes who lived next door um, had a piano and he would go play on that mm -hmm. and Ooh, earned sorry. <laughs> I know, and earned earned enough money when he was quite young to buy himself piano lessons anyway so he got into this conservatory in in Philadelphia and his dream was to be a concert pianist and and he was basically told you can't because you're black so he was looking for other ways to express his musical abilities anyway he auditioned kind of for Duke Ellington and Ellington was like oh this guy is special. And um, what Strayhorn could do is he could play in the style of anyone. So he could play in the style of, of Duke Ellington and then became his sort of stand in, his band leader, his collaborator. He um, wrote a ton of music for him, including the anthem that I think most people think of when they think of Duke Ellington, which is Take the A Train. Mm -hmm. That was actually a great story, which right. I want That's to tell you. That's an amazing, here. iconic piece. Yeah. yeah. So anyway, and he was, um, he was gay and he was very determined to live openly. And so he was... Um, which at that time is unheard of. It, was, it wasn't entirely unheard of, but it made it very difficult for him to be a star in his own right because that was still um, a disadvantage. So wow. um, anyway, so that's a really interesting... That's a great. Story. I mean, yeah. listen. There, there. What's interesting is, I'll often know one of the names, but not both. Right. And then, uh, like Benedict Arnold, I know that name. Mm -hmm. You did Benny, Benedict Arnold and Peggy Shippen. I had heard a little bit about Peggy Shippen. Uh, that's a fascinating story. How those two work together mm -hmm. in positive, negative ways. Mm -hmm. I love that you cast as Benedict Arnold. Uh, you you cast Andy Richter. <laughs> <laughs> Which resonates me resonates with me in so many ways. <laughs> the series opens up so many different great ideas about how people uh, help each other, also can get in the way, mm -hmm. um, and how it's a dynamic. Everything's mm -hmm. a, a, a dynamic. Yeah, I mean, we talk a lot about how that idea of perhaps and that um, uh, is it a koan? There's a like there's some there's some piece of ancient wisdom, I don't mm -hmm. want to misascribe it, um, that talks about how it, everything's basically dependent on how you frame it. So right. this thing happened, it's a tragedy. Mm, at the same time, maybe it prevented something else from happening that would have been worse. And um, I think these stories are all about that kind of, uh, this is the worst matchup ever. Although they did help each other in this way. And right, right. I just think that makes it more interesting and more true. I think it's really... It's really human to want things to be simple. And I think there's a lot of oversimplification that happens all the time, especially now. And this um, kind of doesn't allow for that. These stories allow for a complicated narrative, but you listen to them and they're great stories. Mm -hmm. And I come away and I sort of want to, I always want to know more about, you know, I mean, the Nietzsche one blew That's me. That's such a great one. Elizabeth Forster Nietzsche and Friedrich Nietzsche. And she was really, you know, the, a lot of this I owe to the books that I do read that, you know, there's usually some take by the author, author that's really helpful. And, and the one that I really appreciated with that was that, um, you know, his big thing was all about this will to power that like you're supposed to will yourself into the best version of yourself that you can be. And she really embodied that in a way that was terrifying. And um, she was incredibly ambitious. <laughs> and he was he's been misunderstood a lot, I think. And I'm not claiming to be the one who understands him best at all. But he was anti-nationalist. He didn't believe in statehood. He had lived through war and thought it was abhorrent. And he, he is you know, his sister marries a an anti-Semite who's trying to found a pure racist colony in Paraguay. He thinks that's disgusting. He stops speaking to them. And then by the end of his life, he was so incapacitated that she finagled away to become his, um, you know, caretaker, his minder, his power of attorney, all of that, and used him kind of as a prop that she would 
walk people past and okay. she was hanging out with fascists and Hitler this came to her funeral. This and, is what you're going to do to oh, me. I cannot wait. I'm picking up so many good pointers. <laughs> I, uh, so I, many tips. I, I plan on becoming incapacitated and I know Liza's just going to... Becoming. Gonna... <laughs> <laughs> More incapacitated. But what I'm saying is... <laughs> I don't always ask you to carry me to the toilet, but- um, You don't always ask. And I don't always ask. <laughs> Sometimes I should. Anyway, we got off track. My point is, I love your podcast Thank and you. I'm me not too. saying it because you're making me, which you did. Oh. No, <laughs> she's got a gun. Um, <laughs> <laughs> that begs the question, season 12, Conan and Liza that's episode? Right. Yeah. That episode, well, that's the one where I'm in a wheelchair. Mm -hmm incapacitated. This is months from now. And uh, <laughs> Liza's bringing people by and she's promoting me as a great nationalist figure. Um, <laughs> All those great aphorisms that you've recorded. Yeah, like Nietzsche. The, yeah. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> that usually involve nonsense words. Exactly. Don't be a jibble when you can bibble. Yeah. Uh, I be who I be. There was a big <laughs> refrain last night. It was a lot of I be who I be. Please. No one needs to know about our private off life. Popeye? Uh, changing. Uh, you try singing that Which to the Game of Thrones. Oh, yeah. Question. yeah. <laughs> We were rewatching Game of Thrones, and I insist on singing loudly my own lyrics, which is "I be who I be, <laughs> and oh I God. be." And Liza's like, "You've got." And my son <laughs> is like, "If you do that again, we're not fucking watching this." <laughs> That's the significant other. And then I be who I be, be. So now oh. they don't even watch the openings anymore, as beautiful as they are. Oh. Uh, we watch it for the nudity, anyway. You can um, ruin things. I am a ruiner. You're um, you're a, you're a ruiner. Uh, but anyway, I love Good. that you've gotten everyone at at Team Coco. Oh my God, we'd be lost without it. Gorley, Adam, Blay, Eduardo, Hopping, Erica Brown, everyone. Hayes, Chills. They've all read lines for the episodes. Erica yeah. Brown? No. Yes. Really? Yeah. Yes. Eric, you got Erica Brown and on she a microphone? Does it, she refuses to do a microphone, but she does it because she likes Liza. Oh my God. I, can, I don't think I can ever ask her for anything again. I think I used up all of my credit with her for the rest of time. Oh my yeah. God. She, also, she did not enjoy the experience, you got but she sounds great. Yeah. Ted Danson yeah. was here recording something. Thing and, and nicest man oh, he I've is, ever yes. met. Yes. Well, he's right up there nice with me. Tall drink of water well, too. I'm, I'm tall too. Easy on the eyes. Me too. Yeah, I know. He's yeah. still got was it. Was on television for a long time. Yeah. Yeah. Oh God. Yeah. 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 Easy, Both of us know what it's like. Cool. Yeah. Yep. Friendly. Just the coolest guy. I'm a good bartender. Anyway. What? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I was on Cheers. I know I was. Anyway. Uh, <laughs> You got him helping out. It's just great. I'm very, I'm very excited about it. It uh, premieres uh, on Valentine's Day, and it's called Significant Others. And that is you. That is Liza Powell O'Brien <laughs> running the show. Is that another one of your aphorisms? That, that is you. That is you. That is you. <laughs> that is you. Says that I. Makes more sense than most of that them. That be I have you. To say. Is what I would say. Oh, and great. so now, someday we'll do one about your significant other, Tack. Yeah, I'd love but that. Would it be about him and how I'm his? about his like love for like karate and stuff? Are you it gonna do a, a whole thing about Chernobyl? Are you gonna make it like a fake one? Why, it's not my thing. I, okay, it's, all right. It's Liza's thing. Sorry, okay. it's will legitimate. This, will you tell the story you texted me yesterday? I oh thought that was great. Oh my God, well, yeah, so he went on, he's gonna hate me for saying this, <laughs> but he went on like an intensive karate weekend, which they do twice a year and it always is in different places. And this time it was in Pasadena, which is 10 minutes from our house. And he takes it so seriously that instead of coming home and sleeping because there's no room in the gym, he slept in his car for two nights. And in the middle of what? winter. To be yes. close to the dojo? To be close to where they were practicing. But I think Oh, he's, he's just... so having an affair. <laughs> yes, oh my God. Every time I tell Liza I've got an intensive karate weekend, <laughs> she knows I'm meeting Muriel. <laughs> <laughs> on Catalina. You know what? It's oh, actually, yeah. it's worse if he's not. I know. You know what I, I mean? I know, yeah. He is, though, because I've met all his karate friends. I mean, it's possible. I would, I think I'd feel better if he was having an affair. See, that's I'm, what I mean. I'm already just, thinking. Yeah. That's what I mean. You've got to, these are very, uh, these are very beautifully crafted historical documents that you've made. They're really great. They're really great to listen to. You walk away from each one learning more. Yes. But I do want you to take a break from that and do one about Sona and Tag. <laughs> it's about him sleeping at his car and his quote, on his, on his quote, karate weekend. Sorry, Just, and, it's, and it's in there yeah. and it's, no, and it's in there with, you know, 
all these other great figures. It's in there with it, George Putnam and Amelia Earhart, yeah. and Bear Rustin and Martin Luther King Jr. George Tack and, Orwell, Tack and Salvador Sona, Dolly, yeah, Tack and Sona, <laughs> yeah, Karate Weekend. I know, but you know what? I did see his SUV. He had a whole setup in the back of his car. Okay, that's what I do when I yeah. go to Catalina to meet Muriel. Yeah, I put a bunch of karate. <laughs> Wait, how are you getting your car to? I own Catalina. a seaplane. Okay, fine. I have two different sets of books. You've never. I have two accountants. You've never seen it. Liza's not even angry. She just wants to know the logistics of how to do it. Well, we have talked about this, which is yeah, I've great said line. to Liza, which is that, you know, if you ever found out that I was having an affair, wouldn't your first thought be to be kind of impressed at my time management skills? Because <laughs> that's all I ever think about when I watch movies where someone's having yeah. an affair. I'm like, what? Yeah. I couldn't keep all that straight. Yeah, it's true. <laughs> the it's a lot I, of work. I couldn't, yeah, all that. That's, I, yeah. you know what I mean? We, we are like just barely keep, hanging on with our keep, very yeah. basic. We are very committed to vanilla. each other, monogamous <laughs> relationship, but but we can barely it's more than enough. We can barely keep it going because there's like, oh wait, who's picking up our son? Wait, but when are we going to the airport? There's all that stuff. Who's taking the dog to the? And then who the idea threw out the mani. Who that threw was out the, a big one the other oh, day. Right. Sounds oh fun, man, I was, and, and also I think it hadn't expired. But anyway. <laughs> I wanted a tuna fish sandwich with mayo and suddenly there's no mayo. That didn't go well. But my significant other said, I'll make you some. It's true, and I she did. made me mayonnaise from scratch. I mean, yeah. that's, that's, very good, but... that's a win-win. Yes, and it was better than the regular sure. mayonnaise. Wow. So anyway, that was a win-win, but- This is riveting. I can't wait to hear about this on your episode. Yeah. But wait a minute. Yeah. What I'm saying is if on top of all of that, I had to get on the uh, seaplane to Catalina to meet Muriel <laughs> and bring her the- you know, whatever the avocados she loves to eat. <laughs> <laughs> Who can keep track of all that shit? It's very diverse, chaste in women. Yes, yeah, I was gonna say. She, and you know what? I she's, do love an avocado. And you know what? Though. She's really unpleasant. <laughs> we got it. Yeah. Why are you late? I had to because I was doing a podcast where I was promoting life. Why are you promoting her podcast? <laughs> Why can't I have one? Hey, is that my avocado? Chomp. Then she's super old and there's nothing sexual about it. She is 82 years old. Oh, that's sweet. Yeah. She was a nurse in the Korean War. Anyway, as stupid as this podcast is. I know, I'm sorry, I'm, uh, I'm going to say this. I'm, I'm so proud of you. I love you. I'm so proud of you. And I think this is an incredible piece of work. So I'm excited about the new season. Significant Others, wherever you get your podcast, season two, premiering on Valentine's Day. Subscribe where you get your podcasts.